Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least. But there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic, grain, and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. Well, we saw a bit of a washout in soybean oil and soybeans on the day Thursday, and I know we have plenty to discuss surrounding that and the other moves in the market trade. Joining us now as we discuss the first day of December trade action, Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor, Total Farm Marketing. Brian, good to catch up with you, sir. It's been a couple weeks with the holidays, but glad to have you back on the program. Hope you're doing well. We're doing great. Uh, other, Well, maybe a little better than the markets today. It's kind of a a poor start to the month if you're a grain producer for sure and mm -hmm. um a little bit uh, kind of discouraging kind of the ease at which prices go down and and basically what what i think we in 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 total we continue to see the managed money move out of the commodity complex um uh, in particular row crops uh, we've seen mm -hmm. a big dump out of wheat prices corn has dropped here 50 cents from its recent high uh, and then beans had a big down day today yeah, plenty to look at. And I, I think just top of mind, starting with that bean oil, soybean complex, uh, it, it just felt like a washout day there, kind of maybe a perfect storm on that soy oil side. And maybe the EPA RVO announcement and the renewable diesel uh, or lack thereof for renewable diesel in their announcement was maybe the straw that, that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Brian, uh, what's your thoughts on how that uh, bean oil market performed and, and soybeans in general on Thursday? Well, yeah, you've got a couple of things in the bean complex. They just just did not have a good flavor to it. And and, uh, and we have to keep in mind the market had a pretty good couple of days as well. So we're back to where we started um, three days ago or maybe just a little bit lower. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was the, um, the EPA, um, and I'm not even sure the right language, the EPA announcement, mm -hmm. we'll call it that. Uh, and, and what it looked to me like is it sort of gave the market a sluggish tone. And then once prices slipped through some moving averages, it likely covered a number of sell stop orders. And there were quite a few moving averages that it moved back low today, including the 10, 21, 200 day. Um, these were all triggered. And I'm guessing that if you were long beans, you probably had a stop under the market. So you get this today, you get not only some negative news, but you get this what I call unintended selling which is people that probably didn't intend to sell, but their stop order gets triggered when the market touches it and it kicks them in to a short position. Well, if they're long, it's an offsetting position. So, so it, it's an exit is what it is. So most likely exiting today. And if you're bearish, maybe that's how you enter a market. But I think that's what we saw today. And then again, you know, rumors and talk that China is buying beans out of Argentina, which sets the tone for, what less exports out of the U.S. I I don't know, but um, it's now thought that China probably has enough beans booked for December, and they're rapidly starting to to book into the January period. Which rumor had it they're like forty percent. Well, maybe they're a lot more than that after today. Um, now focus uh, or now focus will turn to weather in the southern hemisphere. That becomes more important, more critical. Mm -hmm. And um, as that does, then the market will probably have a little bit more that it can sink its teeth into um, if there's adverse weather. Argentina is supposed to get really hot over the weekend. So that'll be the interesting yeah. point to kind of see if the market focuses on that potential crop concern there. Very true. And, you know, you mentioned how we have kind of just come back down from where we back to where we were essentially in the soybean complex. I, I just wonder the negative news, you know, is it a is it a one day move, a two day move? I mean, we you mentioned at the top of the show, we've taken out, you know, plenty off the corn market, the wheat markets as of late. Maybe is this, you know, the soybean market catching up and doing the same that corn and wheat have already done? Brian, I think that's something to maybe keep in mind and think about about here as we look at Thursday's action. The, the, the worry that I have and that farmers are probably starting to sense is, is the, are, we, are we headed towards something like we saw toward the end of June 
where once the market tipped over, I mean, it was just, it was like dominoes falling and they fell hard and fast. And that despite, you know, less than ideal weather and, you know, where's the crop going to come from and all those things. And then the market did recover, not fully, but the sideways range in corn, it's its just this two-sided mm-hmm. thing. Now we're at the very low end of the range. Are we trading, uh, you know, the bullish traders are arguing, look, we haven't had a stitch of positive news. Corn's holding well. Ethanol's been good. Exports will pick up eventually. But the bears have got to be saying, look, you're kind of wishful thinking here. Time is going by. There's nothing going on moving the market right now. And the money is moving out. The commuter traders report several weeks back showed that the funds had, had built a net long position of 270000 the longest they were since early spring. And since on the last commitment of traders report, which was released on Monday because of the holiday or wherever, uh, but, but anyway, it, it indicated through the previous Tuesday, 170000 So they sh- shed that many contracts. And then the last couple of days down like this, usually when I see the market down, you know, four during the day and it comes back to three, and then it's back to four and then back to three and then back to four and then, then four and a half and then three. It's, it's a lot of orders pancaked on top of the market selling any kind of upturn, get a little upturn, mm-hmm. you see more selling. It just can't get out of that. It can't get over that, that, that wall, if you will, will or that ceiling of sell orders. Yeah, well, and you you bring up corn in this narrow channel that we've been in, and I'm just, I'm amazed that we got through harvest, and now here we are, December, kind of that holiday malaise type of trade, yet corn's just not doing anything. I, you mentioned we're at the bottom of the range, but it just, it, we can't, we can't see if we get a breakout one way or another, Brian, and to me, just, you know, with how things have been with the harvest, everything, I'm just amazed that corn is still holding where it's at right now. It's been a trader's market. I mean, the, the macro picture is the world snug in inventory. We need big crops and high input values and all of those things that have been supportive. You've got a war that continues to rage on and good gravy. You know, it's it, 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 all of those things, yet none of those are really new or a catalyst. And and the the weekly reminder of the, of the less than ideal export sales is that as you look ahead, it, you know, that you jump to the conclusion, well, gosh, uh, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to see the USD lower these export numbers. And that may happen in December, likely happens after that. If this continues, it's still early enough in the year where, where that could change. And you had the Mississippi issue as well, but, but I, I will tell you, I think as an, as we've talked to farmers here recently, and I think one of them put it in a good sense. He said, you know, I've got the harvest hangover. I've just finished. I put everything away. I, you know, I, I, and then I'm looking at this going, well, am I getting greedy? And he goes, I got a good basis level shot at me. And this particular farmer said, I, I sold. I didn't want to get caught up in some negative thing. Everybody's bullish. And then all of a sudden it's down a bunch. Now he knows how, if he wants to use paper tools to retain the ownership, but it's an interesting environment he's in right now that that his mindset kind of went to caution. Um, and, and if he did, and I talked to a few other farmers that did that, they said, you know, I'm going to sell this. And I, I just, I'm, I'm not going to get caught holding too much because two months ago, it was like, I'm putting the stuff in the bins and closing the doors. We're not, we're not taking it out till $8. Well, I'm not hearing much of that anymore. And that's interesting. You bring that up because uh, you know I I'm with you. I haven't heard much of that either. I know there's still some folks who just say I'll oh, just put it in the bin, and lock it up, and leave it. That's been an old adage for some time. But I'm hearing more and more. A lot of folks are trying to find ways that they can move this grain if they don't know the tools in front of them. So it, it's interesting as we think about that. And you mentioned basis levels. I, I know base is still looking fairly good in some areas. So it, it's just I, I think it begs the question of could we see some farmers selling here through the month of December more so than what you just alluded to Brian you could if it's more fear related and they look to South America now let, let me step back a little bit it, it is sort of the doldrum time of year you're mm-hmm. you're kind of through a holiday you got another holiday coming the markets have a tendency to somewhat drift we know world supplies are are pretty snug the dollar is down again today in a pretty big way, and it looks like it's reflective of, of the the, um, the terms that are used, hawkish and dovish. Dovish, mm-hmm. that means less, uh, uh, hawkish is higher interest rates, and so 
dovish on hawkish. That means it sounds like what Paul said, they're going to raise rates, but at a lower rate. So, mm-hmm. so if you're a manager of a, a, a fund and you've got corn bought and it's sitting there going nowhere fast or not making any money, but you, you look at the stock market, it kind of put in a real strong technical double bottom. Some people call it a one, two, three bottom, whatever the case, it's well off its lows. And I think some of this commodity money shifted over into the um, uh, equities. So that might explain a little bit of the sluggishness in a no news environment. You really don't have weather in South America that is meaningful until you get to about now, maybe mid-December. I always say mid-December. So, so Jesse as a whole, that might be in part why the sluggish is to the markets. Um, the corridor extension, you know, you kind of just start connecting the dots. The corridor extension, the EPA, export sales, nothing in there was friendly. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, South America, Brazil's weather generally good. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things definitely to keep in mind. I, I I think for sure you brought up many great points. Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor, Total Farm Marketing is our guest today. Brian, I want to shift gears to the livestock trade here as well. Hog market, uh, kind of a sudden recovery there at hogs on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, man, oh man, what's your take on what happened there? I I I I will ask the question: What happened a couple of days ago when they were down so sharply? That's um, also true. Uh, and so now they've kind of sprung right back to life and it looks like the traders, you know, recognize the value there. So, so if you want to be a super bull in the hogs, um, we're forming the right shoulder, what's called an inverted head and shoulder formation. So, so you can pick your contract, but if I pick the May hogs, basically what that tells us is the market has about a $12 breakout once it gets beyond the hundred dollar mark. So about one twelve. So that's a formation I'm seeing for- forming. I don't know if the trade is, you know, looking at that and, and buying that. But I think when you look at kind of the big picture, you've got a really solid cash market in cattle and expectations as as we get down the road and work through some of these cows and heifers and have a smaller herd that is, it, you know, this is going to be a tight supply market. And it, it may be that hogs just, they've been sort of erratic, lighter volume. Um it just today was the day to buy hogs. I, I don't know if there's any one thing in particular uh, what might have been the case today that was supportive is sort of this strong sense that China will begin to lift COVID restrictions with all this unrest in China and the idea that they may be a little bit short bought on meats, in particular pork, they might come in and buy pork. So I, I will say that, you know, if I had to try and connect some arrows today i would say it was probably the the well two things in china one less restrictive covid they, they, they found these lockdowns and restrictions aren't, aren't that's not doing any good apparently mm-hmm. and then the second thing is um earlier in the week it was announced that china uh the government of china would um i gotta think of the right words here but 70 billion dollars worth of uh, less dollars required to borrow. So, you know, it, it's a stimulus to, mm-hmm. to, um, to pick up the economy there. So maybe there's some, some hope and benefit there for meats because that, the, you know, unlike soybeans that might come out of Argentina or maybe beans out of Brazil, pork's going to come out of the U S very true. Well, and speaking of China, they were a buyer of beef on the weekly export sales report. That was encouraging, I think, to see. And look at a cash cattle trade this week, steady to higher once again. Uh, I wonder your thoughts in this cattle market, which the futures I know was a little more mixed, but overall, what's your thoughts uh, a little bit more on the cattle trade, Brian? I've been concerned that the cutout values have actually been dropping and that the Packers are reported to have been working in the red uh, this week so far. If they're paying higher today without increases in cutouts, I'm, I'm guessing they're back. They're more in the red. I think they were $23 in the red yesterday per head, and that compares to these outrageous like $400 of profit a year ago at this same time. But it sure looks like they've been um, – uh, well, the cattle market supplies are relatively tight. The biggest wet rag over the market has just been this continuous, continuous inflationary concern, uh, and maybe that in part with ideas of lower interest rate. That the hog market kind of started here today too. But I, I think the big concern is just what the consumer can pay and what they're willing to pay. Um, I was looking at um, uh, slaughter numbers. Um, 
week to date, 512,000. Same period last year, 493,000. So we think about that, you know, high grain prices and if there's more heifers and cows in that mix. So so right now, I, I think nice uptrending market. I'm very cautious because if the Packers are making money at some point, they might just back away. And if they feel they've got enough holiday meat or Super Bowl meat kind of in the pipeline, they might start backing away and not willing to, to bid as much. Um, I don't really see any, it's cold, but it's not, I don't see the kind of weather that would tell me we're going to lose weight gain on cattle here in the very near term. Brian, how about that dairy market? Any thoughts there as we start the month of December? Yeah, it's had a pretty tough go, a nice update a day. And we're hopeful that the buyers have a little bit more interest in buying. Maybe again, with some of the interest rate talk of slowing interest rates and, you know, getting some money back into the consumer or at least the consumer having confidence to go out and buy. So we had, we had a nice update a day, anywhere from seven to 49 higher as I, as I have this conversation. And, and that puts us getting close to $20 in February, um, uh, 1992, um, Limited upside. The last production report showed enough inventory or a little bit of an increase in inventory. You've got fairly snug butter supplies, but ample cheese supplies is what it looks like right now. And if China can get its economy kind of moving, maybe that helps. But I think that's kind of the big uncertain right now is that big consumer, that, that whole environment in that part of the world. Um, there's been a lot of caution with that, and uh, we'll see what the global dairy market says here in the next week or two. But my guess is it's it's going to confirm that that prices have slowed in that part of the world. So limited upside for the dairy market right now. Twenty, I would argue, twenty to twenty-two dollars is about all you're going to get out of the market. And twenty-two dollars might be a little bit robust right now. Brian, any final thoughts for us here before we wrap it up today? If I'm a farmer, I, 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 you know, I'm keeping a leery eye on the markets. I'd probably concentrate a little bit more on, you know, strategy. How do I, how do I not, you know, if things take a big spill, how do I not get caught with that too much? And that isn't anything new or really preaching. It's just the weakness in the market sort of brings home that, that, um, that potential consequence if the market doesn't move higher soon. Um, and, um, I would encourage farmers to really think about that. Well, Brian, if folks want to reach out to you and get some advice there with uh, with Total Farm Marketing, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, I think just with a simple phone call, 800-334-9779. And you can also find them online, totalfarmmarketing.com. With that, Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor, Total Farm Marketing. Always a pleasure, sir. Thanks for joining us and uh, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Jesse, thank you. Much appreciate it. And that's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.